Hello everybody, we are here live from the Gentleman's Lounge on the G Code. Um, we have your host, I am your host for today, Julius Williams. To the left we have Glenn and Alex, and then we got my man Ryan and Chizzy. Today we will have a series of topics, um, mainly focusing on sports. Uh -oh. you know, sports in our community, you know, sports you know, on a professional level, sports period. So, uh, so guys, hey man, so what do you guys think, what's going on right now in the world of sports? Right now, for me, I don't know if y'all know, and y'all familiar with the Ball Brothers, the Ball family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just generally speaking, we don't have to go too deep on it, but I, I feel like education is a big thing when it comes to sports, um, especially as a fellow athlete. I don't know if y'all know, but he took his son, his high school son, mm -hmm. withdrew him from school, and also he had a college son who got some trouble over in China. Um, Trump probably got out of jail. Whatever, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, but he withdrew them both from school, and took them overseas to play basketball to get paid. Um, I don't really, I, I agree with it to a certain extent. The high school kid, I touch definitely disagree with it. But I mean, I don't know how you guys may agree with it. if you had a son that would, that you think you thought so highly of, would you withdraw him from high school? He was in the senior year, putting up 70, 90 points, and say, you know what, it's time to get this money. And then they would go to the NBA, forget high school, and then he also took his college son too. Over there. So how would y'all feel about that? You gotta be careful with that. So the caveat is that you know everybody wants to make money, mm -hmm. but the other side of it is you gotta get an education. So your the way that you're always able to be successful is if you have an education. So by taking them out too early, you know you might have done him in injustice. Mm -hmm. Now college level, that's a little different. You're already a little advanced. You can always go back and finish that up. Mm -hmm. um, high school level. Adds a little testing. Mm -hmm. um, of course, everybody wants to get to the money, mm -hmm. but sometimes you can you can mess yourself up by putting money ahead of education because what happens is if you spend maybe three years over there, then you come back to the states, then you might be starting at a uh, at a lower point than everybody else, and you don't want to have to catch up. So, what about high school? What about athletes that get well? Not at well. They they change the rule. But high school athletes going straight from high school to the pros, that's almost kind of similar to the same thing mm -hmm. in, the, in the sense of he just ain't graduate, he don't have a high school diploma, mm -hmm. you know, as far as we know. But I, I think that's kind of like the same thing. So I agree with you to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but it can go either way, in my book. Um, if I'm going to chime in, I believe that, um, I believe that is the, um, <laughs> the wrong thing to do um, for a couple of reasons. One, um, you have a thing called professionalism, you know, that a 18-year-old kid, even a 22-year-old kid that gets drafted to the NFL um, is not even quite ready for. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a certain thing, especially these days with social media, uh, people are just accustomed to so much money, so much exposure to be able to do things that they've never done before. Um, but that's why it goes so fast. That's why guys don't last because mm -hmm. if I'm 22 years old, you know, and I just got a million dollars, then I'm a, I'm listening to all the rap songs. I think I'm supposed <laughs> to go buy all the expensive drugs, right. all the clothes, um, take care of my homeboys, have my circle. I'm not mature enough to really make the right kinds of decisions, you know. So especially for a kid in high school that, that goes overseas to play basketball, I can only imagine the types of exposure that he's going to get, especially when it comes to you know, the first thing, no disrespect to the women in the room, but the first thing that comes with money is women. Mm -hmm. That's one of the first things that, that comes. As soon as you get a check, your inbox is, is, is somebody's in your inbox. You know, so that alone is, if somebody without a mature mind, it can be detrimental to them because you got some of these guys, that's just all they can begin to think about, you know, mm -hmm. that level. As a parent, you are your child's role model. You know what I mean? Even if you don't have any children, if you have nieces and nephews, they're going to look up to you for some type of leadership or guidance, right? So as a parent, when you remove your child, as a parent, you're supposed to teach your child, go to school, graduate, you know, please, you know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? Go through the process. So even if you don't go to college, at least get that high school diploma. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can even go to trade school or, you know, start something else or whatnot. So in my mind, I'm like, what are you really sending to your young man? What are we teaching him? Like, you know, hey, just leave school. You see what I'm saying? You're supposed to be that role model to look up to. Like, my daughter, one day, um, she's actually eight now. 
And a couple of years ago, I think it was. Bad what problem. are you gonna do? When you, huh? Bad problem. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she's cool. She take out her dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but a couple of years ago, her and I was having a conversation, and I just, I was just like, "What do you want to do when you grow up?" She said, "I want to be like mom. I want to dress up and go to work." Because at that's six at the time, that's what she's used to seeing. You see what I'm saying? If she was to see mommy sit around the house all day, don't do anything, on the phone with friends, gossiping, doing whatever others do, in her mind, she says, I just want to sit in the house all day. I don't want to go to school. Right. But in her mind, all she sees her mom dress up, going to work, working in an office setting. You see what I'm She just dresses pretty. You see what I'm saying? So... That's my thing. As a parent, we're role models. So when you pull your child out of school, when you're supposed to be telling them, go to school, go to school, and you're like, oh, I don't go to school because I get this money, I, mean, I don't, I, it, it, that disturbs me. It's just the wrong, it's the wrong thing to, to emphasize yes. at that age. You know, money should be one of the last things. That, and they family got money, though. Exactly. Right. So they're yeah. talking about sports. <laughs> like, I had a privilege uh, while playing. Uh, one of my best friends is Cecil Newton, who happens to be the, um, the older brother of Cameron Newton. So I had a chance to be, uh, to become very close to their family, you know, while playing in Jacksonville with Cecil. We were actually camp roommates. So um, his father was so hands on to the fact where he would call Cecil to see how his day went. And then he would put me on the phone. Mm. And he didn't know me from a can of paint. But he would like, put your room on the phone, you know. Um, how did you do today? You know, what kind of practice did you cut out there? Influence of him. Exactly. 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 That makes exactly. sense. Yep. So, and then, as I began to come closer to their family and meet Cam and, and, and hang out with them, you know, when, when Cam was in college, Cam would be home for break. You know, his dad would be like, what you doing? And Cam would be like, I'm about to go this, I'm that. I'm, nah, nah, you about to go throw. You know, and like, it wasn't an option. You know what I'm saying? It was like, okay, whatever you're doing, nothing is more important. And going out and throwing this ball, yeah, you know, right. and making sure that you get that in, That's it. you know, and and, and 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 further knowing Cam as an adult, I mean, he puts this facade out that people think he's such a bad boy. I mean, Cam is probably is really what you call lame. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't drink. He doesn't, you know, do any of those typical things. But a big part of that is because of the influence of his father. Mm. You know, of mm. him always putting the actual sport in front of extracurricular activities. So, so he set them up for success. Right, exactly. That's it. And right. and so that's the big thing. Like you gotta set your kid up for long term success right. instead of short term. Right. Like you can always go out there and get a check yeah. quick in a year. You can right. go out there and make a check. But when you talk about longevity, right. and I'm, my biggest thing for my family is legacy. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. what's your legacy? What did you leave your kids that will propel their kids first? You know, the next generation. What did you do? And so to me, if you jump your kids out and take them overseas for a quick dollar but they come back to the states and they don't have an education, they don't have anything that they can pour into their kids, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you have to understand what to the choices that you make will, will influence what happens mm -hmm. later on in your That's life. That's it. And I think that, like, take a, a dad like, like like Cam's dad, you know, he, he put that, always put the product in his face of what you want to become, not, you know, while we're doing it or, or you know, anything else. One of the things, too, is like this may actually be doing, is, especially as a younger son, a disservice because I was watching ESPN a while back and they were talking about the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the level of competition that he's playing against. It's like pickup game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely not the same. It's not the same. He would have done better just going to the wide playing here in the States as opposed to taking him out of school to see him over there. So I don't, I don't necessarily see what the benefit is. Right. You know, yeah. long, long, long. the ego thing to say I'm the first to do it. I think that's what it's more more selfish to me. And I don't know this gentleman, but just outside looking in, the Mr. Ball, the father we're referring to now, I think it was a selfish move saying, I want to show what my son did. Right. And, it, and oh, instead of cause his son, it, I mean, he could easily when they got the GED online. We don't know that. Right. But it's just how it looks. He may still be in high school right now. Correct. Online. Right. 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 Yeah. But right yeah. now, yeah. he's not. Yeah. And it's the way it looks. Yeah. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? Country basketball. Is it that right. serious to prove your point? That you take your child out of high school, I bet he had a high school diploma. Oh, yeah. I bet he had the privilege to walk across the stage, but he takes that away from his son because he wants to prove a point. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's my only issue with it. They may be a great father outside of that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to take that from the man, 
You know what I mean? Like one thing as far as with coaching, I never bad mouth another coach. May not like what he says or does, but we're all in the same profession. So right. as a parent, you know what I mean? Not that I know we're not bashing him, but I'm just saying like he may be a great dad, but that move right there outside looking in, like, eh. Right. Yeah. I ain't allowed to check good, I'm going. Too bad your days are over with, brother. But you know, that's a real statement. It takes a older person, no disrespect, right. but it takes an older person that has walked down that path and realized that, you know, in that year, I made a sizable amount of money. But had I taken my time, took a step back, mm -hmm. and did the building blocks, mm -hmm. and said, you know what, I'm going to pause on the check, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get the building blocks, and then so when the check comes, now you have a long check. Mm -hmm. Now nobody can take that away from you because mm -hmm. you already, if they did take it, then you knew exactly what it took to get there. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get right back. All right, fellas, let's switch gears real quick. Let's talk about the legacy of Tom Brady. You see this right here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. You know, like, you, know, you, know, you know how I feel. I'll be honest. I'm a diehard Cowboy fan. I'll let anyone know that, as you can see. But I was born in New England. What? So I was born in Providence, Rhode Island. Man. 24 Waverly Street, woman and infant. Oh, you got all type <laughs> of no, but I'm saying though, <laughs> you got to give the man his props. No, you got to. You have to. As, you just have to give the man his props. It's bad. Like, in the, in my bad control, but the same way as people look at LeBron James, you may, everybody may not like him, mm -hmm. but you got to give that man his props. Same thing with Tom Brady. You mm -hmm. have to, regardless if you like him, whatever the case is, you have to give him his props for what he's done as far as his legacy and contribute toward the game. So I don't like Tom Brady, but. I mean, I gotta give give possible props too. I feel like the Patriots organization is rewarded uh, for the work they put in because um, I've happened to have several, you know, former teammates and friends that played for the Patriots, and each one of them said the same thing. Like Bill Belichick, he drives for excellence. Yeah. Like, it's no way that you can be you can play for the Patriots and not be an absolute student of the game. He doesn't mm -hmm. want you. You know, he doesn't care about your talent. He doesn't care about how fast you run, how much weight you can lift. And he only true. cares about the preparation yeah. that you put in. So people say, like, you got teams like Jacksonville that should have beat them, but they, they couldn't beat them because of the, at the end of the day, the preparation. And I think Tom Brady is a spearhead of that, which I, why I think he's going to go out as the best quarterback to ever do it, let alone the best quarterback, the best player. Because I think one thing he understood even in a, in a situation like last year with the 11 hometown birds, you know, it was just a, a he went in a, he's been in that situation so many times, he's studied it so many times, mm -hmm. he knows exactly what he wants to do, you know, mm -hmm. so he doesn't panic, he goes out and gets it done, yeah. you know, so I think it's just a, 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 a prevalence of him continuing to work and continuing to study and continuing to put that in every day when nobody's watching, yeah. and it pays off when the lights come on. Now, let, me ask, let me ask this question, you know Tom Brady. Why is it that Tom Brady is not defined by his mistakes, we'll say, in comparison to, say, a Barry Bonds? He's defined by steroids. Mm. We don't bring up Deflategate or any of the other instances of malfeasance that occurred with the Patriots when we talk about Tom Brady. It's just Tom Brady's great. I think more or less because Deflategate is more of an allegation. You know, and nobody really has the absolute proof. And I mean, to be honest, from my standpoint as a football player, uh, former football player, um, I don't think it's much that you can do about taking a little bit of air from ball. I'll be honest. You know, if you go pop steroids, you know, there's a lot that you can do from yeah. that because you're not going to be able to. So, uh, not to play the black and white thing here, just to play the the what makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, even if they, they did take a little bit of air out of the ball, I don't see yeah. how that's going to – you still got to read coverage. You still got to know gotta where to put the ball. The ball. Yeah. So, you know, so yeah, even on that, true. Yeah. so give me steroids. Am I going to become Barry Bonds? Not necessarily. But All right. But, but you will he become, still has the talent, right? But you will become – well, like this. You will become a super Barry Bonds. You know mm. what I'm saying? So the I Barry Bonds that may get tired after 100 swings, you're not going to swing 300, you know, because – Steroids is meant to boost, you know, uh, your, I don't want to butcher it, you know, it just sounds ignorant, but it, it basically boosts your performance, you know, mm -hmm. so it's a performance enhancing, like deflate the ball is not going to 
enhance, you know, your sight to see the little bit. Right, throw that thing. You can throw it. Right, it's going to enhance your ability. Right, you can throw it. You can throw it about another 10 to 15 yards, though, so I don't So deflating the ball is deep. But you still got to make the right decision on where to throw it. Yeah, so you have to overthrow it, you know what I'm saying, and so forth. Same thing with burials. You still got to time that pitch when it comes in. Steroids ain't helping you with that. It just helps you. It just helps you do more, and it helps you from being injured. That's the main basis mm -hmm. of steroids. Like if you don't, you get hurt, it gets you back quicker, and it prevents you from being injured. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah, I mean, people, you know, they're, they're both allegations. I mean, well, Barry is not an allegation with Barry because he admitted to it. Mm -hmm. Right. But mm -hmm. um, but I just think in, in that sense with the flake game, uh, I don't think it takes away from his legacy because it's something that hasn't been proven. You know, it's only been an allegation. Right. Well, real quick before we go into the next topic, the last question though, so. Super Bowl is coming up. Who y'all got? Real quick. Eagles or the Patriots? I'm going with the home team. I'm going with the Patriots. You look like a Patriot. I'm going with the Patriots with my Cowboy jersey on. You know, I'm going with the Patriots. I love an underdog. I Me love fighting. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles. It's about time for them to go ahead and take it home. It's about time they get something. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, definitely gonna throw something. What I'm gonna say is the road to the Super Bowl goes to the Falcons. The last teams that have beat the Falcons. Made to the Super Bowl or won the Super Bowl. So, since the Eagles beat the Falcons, I'm going Eagles. Yeah, we go. I mean, Everybody you gotta beat the Falcons. Whoa! He said, with the Cowboys! We didn't have Zeke. 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 Zeke wasn't gonna stop the six sacks. What about that? Uh, uh, right, I, I got one last thing before we go. All right, we didn't hit on it. I think it's a very touchy subject. Um, is sports the only way out for our boys? Mm. Our boys. When I say our boys, I mean the African American community, the urban, the ethnic community. Is it our only way out? And what are the dangers of our kids playing sports? I want to be able to, um, the thing is, it goes back to um, something we had discussed earlier. When a young African American man turns the TV on, mm -hmm. the That's only the time he sees, there's only two times he sees himself on TV. He's on the morning news, mm -hmm. and the young African American male is getting hauled off to jail. Mm -hmm. The second time we see an African American male, it's going to be somewhere on the sports segment, either maybe three music, music. music. Okay, correct. Yeah, three. There we go. Yeah. Correct music, yeah. or on a sports piece from the local news or ESPN and so forth. So I mean, and then it's preached on in a community, in the African American community. Sports, sports, sports. Little Junior going to the league. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So when that's when you t and you tell a, a, a young lady, you're so pretty, you're so pretty, you're so pretty. She's gonna walk into a room feeling what? Pretty, pretty. You tell a young man you're going to the league, you're going to the league, you're going to the league. That's something that's gonna, that's, that's being pounded into him. So he's he's gonna walk into that. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now the only problem is when it doesn't happen because you know the percentage. Go back down. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Now it's his now it's his mental strength. And the people around him that's going to keep him uplifted when that doesn't happen. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. But it's something that's timely. I want to hear something you said right quick that I'll let everybody else. Uh, you said something key. And I think it's a gift and a curse. Because it's a gift because, okay, you take something that you're first started about. Um, when you go to the football field, everything around you ceases. No matter what your circumstance is, no matter what you've got going on at home, no matter what you're mad about, when you're on that green grass for however long you're there, it's what you're thinking about. It gives us a great opportunity. It's very therapeutic uh, for our youth. I coached Little League football last year, mm -hmm. you know, and it was I, and that does a lot for us, for our minds. Mm -hmm. uh, but like you said, the parent that makes his kid feel like you are already Barry Sanders, you're going to the NFL, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's 0, 0.0. 3% mm -hmm. of athletes out of millions of athletes each year that would even have the opportunity to smell the NFL, you know. So I feel like you got all these young guys who they live their entire lives thinking I'm going to go to the NFL, and even the ones who do go to the NFL mm -hmm. and play for seven, eight, nine years in the NFL, when a lot of those guys, and I, don't, I won't speak for all of them, but a lot of those guys, when they leave the NFL, it's like they're still that eight-year-old kid. Because they haven't learned anything else besides lift weights, run, 
you know, study playbook. Yeah. Make sure you're on meetings on time. Sure. You know, and, they, and that take a lot of good habits away from it. But a lot of a lot of the guys when they leave at 30 years old, they're stuck. What do I do now? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know how to do this or that. I've had people balance, you know, my bank accounts, my checks, my business endeavors, my this, my that. And then when you no longer can pay people to do that, your mindset is still of that eight-year-old child if you're not a person who, you know, been hands-on with all of your mm-hmm. endeavors. So that's another that's another reason I feel like, you know, it's kind of a curse because, you know, yeah, you can go out and make tons of money but nobody teaches you how to take care of that money and manage that money and make the right investments and make the right personal decisions, mm-hmm. you know, when it's over, it's it's, it's over hard. Right. You know, it's like and some people I've even heard heard guys say, I wish I never went <laughs> you know. Dang. And it is that deep, you know. Mm. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, I know this probably is not off it's probably not on topic, but since I'm sitting up here with you guys, I think you guys are all knowledgeable. I got another question to add to the topic, though. How do y'all feel about, and this is going back to college and, and stuff like that, how do, y'all, do y'all think college players should be compensated or outside of their scholarship and get paid for playing college sports? Seeing that these universities, colleges are making all this money, I watched a, something on YouTube and I seen how much the college coach makes, the university makes, and you know these, some of these college players, football players actually, are complaining like, you know, I know my coach is making this, school's making this off of us, and we're not saying that we can't even eat at night. You know what I'm saying? We're having to call our coaches, we're having to call friends, family, mm-hmm. yeah, just, just to eat at night. So my question is, so do y'all think that college students should get paid for yeah. some of for, for, for the work time. that they put in? And I'll tell you why. It's because when you change something, when you change an institution into a business, mm-hmm. you know, then essentially you're telling that kid when to show up, when to leave, how to perform. What does that sound like? It sounds like a job. (laughs) If you don't perform, what happens? You get cut. Right, facts. There's penalties for it. So I'm like, they should be compensated for that. At the Mm -hmm. point where I can't show up, I can't perform, then I get cut, uh, then I'm no longer able to to make a a, a living, you know, essentially. Um, I feel like they, they should get compensated. I mean, one broken ankle, that's the end of their career. They gotta leave and find something else. Mm-hmm. So, I feel like they should, my bad, go ahead. If you are taking a piece of merchandise and you're selling it in the school shops or wherever you're selling it, yeah, it's got true. my name on it, <laughs> oh, yeah. I need a cut. Yeah. My mom and daddy gave me that name. Mm-hmm. You don't own that. That's, a, that's, that's my business. property. That's business. Well, yeah. well, one thing I can say to that is um, they can't, well, I don't know, back when I was playing in college, uh, the rule, that rule was, they can't use your name, mm-hmm. they can use your number. Uh, but they, in the co-ops, they can't use your name. And I believe that they should be compensated. I went through it, I know how hard it is right. to be a college football right. athlete mm-hmm. and student. You know, it's been many nights where I was broke and couldn't buy, couldn't buy stuff, you yeah. know, I had to rely on, you know, wherever I got it from. Right. But at the same time, I don't feel like they're, they are mature enough mm-hmm. to receive that payment do the right stuff. So I believe there should be some type of compensation, but it should not be a direct compensation. Oh, I would rather give it to the parent yeah. or set up a trust. Or, or set up exactly. some type of, you know, yeah. or somewhere. Put it, they, it, roll it within their scholarship. Okay? Yeah, we give you $20,000, right. so we're going to give you an extra right. 10000 5000 right. throughout this year yeah. to right. spread it out. Right. I, I agree with that. Put it in the trust. Right. Right. Definitely put it in the trust. If you just now told it again, we were talking about sports. Today had a lot of good topics. Uh, one thing I want to end with is who do you guys think is going to be your Super Bowl winner for next year? How is the season going to go, Glenn? You start us off, bro. I mean, I don't really have to say too much. You already see what's going on across my chest. Goddamn, we go Cowboys, man, you Man, look, man. Zeke's back. The real one is sitting next to you, though. Uh, there we go. The real one. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. It's the Falcons. It's, 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 it's time. You know. It's time. It's time. It's time for the for Atlanta to shine. I hear you. You been rehearsing that? <laughs> <laughs> the city knows it. Everybody knows it. Yeah, we've been priming for it. We've just been priming. Hey, it is in Atlanta. You know, hey, man, it is. Oh, hey, Mercedes Benz. Next year, right. we bring it home. Bring it home. Bring it home. Rise up. So we got the Cowboys, the Falcons. Who you got? Uh, I think I want to see who I got last. Okay. Man. okay. I see what right. y'all say, man. <laughs> oh, it's the Falcons, man. <laughs> Do I got to say that? Y'all want me to say it for the record? Who you rocking with? With my man, Sean. Yeah, 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 y
I got to rock with the home team. See, I just found out that you're really from New England, so now my whole perception of you is shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're not going to go that. Julius, who you going with? <laughs> hey, man, I think I'm going to go with the good old Jacksonville Jaguars. Man. Uh, I, feel, I like them dogs. Yeah. You know, like, I, feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like they're a team, they're young, they're on the rise. Yeah. You know, they got a lot of good things going on, a lot of great pieces, only a small amount of pieces that we can add to He's make ourselves complete, complete yeah. you know. Beat. So I'm definitely, you know, going with the Jacksonville Jaguars, the team that gave me a paycheck at one point. Oh, okay. So, you know, definitely. Um, so this is going to wrap up, you know, today's segment of sports, you know, on the G-Code. So you can find me on social media, uh, on Instagram. It's Battle of the Trenches on Twitter, which I just started a couple months ago, Julius Trenches. Um, yeah, get at me, man. BattleOfTheTrenches.com. I got the gang with me. You cannot hang with me. You cannot stay in the G. I saw my chain, you see. 